and uh, 14 years. Uh, uh, I can only speak English and Hindi. Yes, yes. So you're okay with English, right? Yes. Okay, lovely. It's very good to be here with everyone after, you know, we've been here in Goa for nearly 14 years. I think we've done a lot together. Uh, Sunburn owes its very existence to Goa. If there was not the platform that we got in Goa, Sunburn wouldn't exist where it is today. Uh, we've, we've done a lot. I think we have contributed <coughs> to employment. We've contributed to business, to the hotels. We've contributed to shacks, contributed to bars, restaurants, airline, taxis, local community over the year. Actually, this might surprise you, but uh, I was talking to one of the journalist friends before everybody came in, and I asked him a question. What do you think has been our contribution to the economy in Goa? And you'd be surprised. The number runs into a few thousand crores. It's not a small, it's not, it's just not a party. This is a big tourism, tourism business. It's called music tourism worldwide. Such events are used to actually promote tourism because every time we do an event like this, people come and those people who come, they not only buy the ticket to Sunburn, they not only eat and drink at Sunburn, they also stay in hotels, they fly, they take taxis, they do shopping, they do khana, pina. So there's a lot of money that gets spent that actually finds its way to the local community and also to the government. It pains me. I, in one of the newspapers recently, I read somebody saying uh, that sunburn is not good for the local people of Goa. Actually, to put up a sunburn event in December every year, you know, I'm going to share with you, a few thousand people work for nearly one month to put up the whole construction. Those, thousand, those few thousand people don't come from outside. There are about 50 to 100 food stalls that are set up. That food doesn't come from outside. Those stalls, uh, uh, managers are not from outside. The entire staff, the entire, entire infrastructure is built using local people, local, local suppliers. So Sunburn does actually bet. We also pay fees to the government. We pay our taxes. We pay deposits. We do everything with permission. So far, we have never done any event in Goa without permission. At the same time, I must say that we've also stayed completely compliant. We have not broken the law till today. So it pains me sometimes when I read that, hey, we should not be allowed to do this. We, we, we are doing something wrong. We are not doing anything wrong. I also read somewhere that Sunburn will bring COVID. Trust me, just like you care for your health and just like the local people care for their health, I care for my health. My family also cares about my health. I'm not immune to COVID. I don't think my mother or my wife or my children will allow me to come to Sunburn if the COVID risk is real. I just want to draw attention to a very, very simple point. Usually, usually when we plan a sunburn type of an event, it takes us nearly a year, one year. We apply to the government in January, we start booking the artist, we start booking the venue. It takes about a year. This year, we didn't apply in January, we didn't apply in February. We waited, we waited till the situation looked like improving. We only applied then. And our application, we've actually provided a copy of our, the, uh, the in-principle letter, permission letter that we got from the government. The application itself was conditional. We said we only need permission from the government to start planning the event, not to do the event. I just want to clarify, <clears throat> we are not doing the event. We've only taken permission and we are planning because nobody in the world can predict how COVID behaves. We don't know sitting here right now in December whether you'll have more cases or less cases, no cases. In June, July this year, Goa was green. It had no cases. Unfortunately, the cases came up. The number went up to, I think, a couple of hundred. And currently, it seemed, there seems to be a downward trend. But we don't know how it will be around Christmas. We don't know. If it is good, if it is favorable, and an event can be done, we will do it. If it is not favorable, if it is not conducive, we will not do it. We care for everyone's health and safety as much as we care for ourselves, you know, so we are not going to do it. Our commitment to the government is very clear. In our permission letter, ha I, have you all seen the copy of the permission letter? We gave it to everyone. You have it. Please take a look at it. There were a few conditions put on that in principle letter. Condition number one was we will follow Ministry of Home Affairs guidelines, which is central government. Central government in Unlock 5.0 allowed large-scale outdoor events 
provided social distancing and some few other protocols were followed. We, we are fulfilling that condition. The other condition was we have some history with the government of Goa. We had, we had some accounts that needed to be reconciled. That needed to be clear. We are completely going to comply with that. And the third thing is, it says clearly that the final permission will only be given looking at the COVID situation at that point in time. And which is what we are operating on. So all I want to do is, I want to reassure each one of you that we are not going to do the sunburn event if the, it's not believed to be safe at that point in time. Very, very clearly. We will not do it. I don't want my children to go there. I don't want to be there. I don't want my family to be there. How can I expect anybody else to come there? Having said that, having said that, should we get the permission? Should the situation look good? How are we going to do it? I will take you through a few slides just to, just to explain to you what our plans are. But please understand, these plans are only if the COVID situation gets better and the government feels it's okay and safe to attempt something like this, even though the central government guidelines allow such an event to happen right now. I'm going to take you briefly through limited capacity out of the few headers that you see here in front of you. In 2019, last year, in December, the venue was Vagator, is the same venue. That venue had a capacity of about 100,000 people. This year, for the same venue, we are less than 10,000. Means the amount of space that was available to one person at the venue last year, this year you'll have 10 times more space, minimum, okay? One point. Second point is, last year we had five stages. This year we're only planning three stages, okay, smaller. Whatever parking arrangements we had for 50 to 100,000 people last year, same arrangements are being kept even for 9,500 people. Basically, we want to make sure there's no crowding, okay? As you can see here, I'm sure you're familiar with the topography of Bagator area. All the blue patches that you see are parking areas. The festival area, I'll explain to you a little more in detail. This is what it looks like. Let me take you one by one. For entry, um, some of you have, may have been to Sunburn Festival. There's one big gate. Everybody goes through that gate. This year, what we've planned is, can you see this purple uh, lines here? Here, right here. We have, we have 10 gates, not one gate to enter. 10 gates. And at each gate, for just for information, sorry, at each gate, we'll have a time slot allocation. Just like you go to the airport, you have a time slot. At any given time, at a particular gate, there will not be more than 20, 30 people. Earlier, there used to be a few thousand people. So from one gate, we made it actually 14 different gates. 1 to 14. Even on these gates, from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock, there will be different 15-minute time slots. So people will come separately. Exit. We have 30 gates for exit. Because you will say, while coming in, we can separate people, give them different time slots while going out, how? So going out, we will have 14 to enter, we'll have 30 gates to exit, we'll open all the emergency gates. As you can see here, these are the gates that have been planned. This is the MIP entry at the back, this is the artist and true entry at the back, and this is the MIP platinum entry. Now, uh, we, we also have temperature check, band check, scanning of Arogya Setu app. We have a holding area to hold crowd, maintain social distancing, form queues. There's a large area here that can hold a lot of people. We have checkpoint two, which is thermal scanning. Just like you may have seen at the, at the airport, you might have seen in some government offices, the cameras installed. When you go, the full body scan comes there. So we have thermal scanners that will scan everybody who enters. We have more than 20 aisles there. We have frisking, we have aisles. All our crew and staff will have gloves, will have masks. We have turnstile checks, then finally there are many checks. Now every ticket holder can choose a time to come. There'll be 15 minute slot given to everybody. All gates from one to 14 will be monitored by trained health and safety officials. Every ticket holder will be directed towards the gate that is assigned to him. There'll be no touch. There'll be no contact at all. Audience have, will be denied. Of course, those who have temperature will be denied. Ticket sales, ticket takers will also be wearing face coverings and gloves when they're amongst the audiences. Entry and exit protocol, like I explained, all gates will be used for exit. Uh, health and safety, our venue, every day will be sanitized, even before the festival will be sanitized. Well, in short, I can tell you, we will be 
very safe. But again, let me remind you, all this will only happen if the conditions are favorable. Otherwise, no, we are not even planning to do it. All surface objects that are touched frequently will be regularly disinfected and sanitized. All restrooms, we have doubled the number of restrooms, will be monitored closely to preserve appropriate space between the audience and easily noticeable line to avoid conflict. Take a look at this image. <clears throat> it's the first time ever, if you buy a ticket, you don't go and stand on the ground. You can see these enclosures that are created. So you will be assigned a particular enclosure. In this row, this particular enclosure. So only you and your friends or family are together. Just to give you an example, each one of these enclosures, I'll, this particular visual that you see here, the front few rows are GA, next few rows are VIP, then there's GA again. Let me explain to you, each one of these boxes that you see can hold 200 people. But we will only give 50 tickets for that area. So basically you mean people have minimum four times the space. Our normal calculation is two feet by two feet, which is four feet for one person normally. But during these times, we're making it four times. So it's nearly four times as much space for each individual. Again, VIP will have boxes of six, four, and eight. We'll have six all over the place. We'll have respiratory protection. We'll have maximum comprehension, compliance, signages, posted awareness, gloves. Workers will also be completely secured. Uh, usually, we used to have a food court. Food court means a goal area tha, and food stalls were around. This time, no. All the food stalls are in one line with double spacing and enough space in front of them for people to stand. We are also trying to make sure that people get their food and drinks in their enclosure, in the box that they buy. The watchtowers, this is the part of security that the police deploy. There will be enough watchtowers that will be manned by the police and officials across the venue. All dustbins, enough dustbins, enough housekeeping manpower, enough, you know, wastage uh, segregation, just about everything. But having said all this, having said all this, let me, let me remind you that all these protocols will only be used as super safety, double safety, should this situation allow. I repeat. We will not do the event. We are not planning to do the event. We were never planning to do the event unless the COVID situation is manageable and the authorities believe it's in control, right? So my, my first request is if, if ever media has any question, we have a representative or that she's been our friend supporter for a long time. You can reach out to me. You can reach out to my team members. We are very happy to answer your questions. I don't think it's necessary to create, to carry, you know, articles and ask questions through the newspaper when you can ask directly. We are happy to answer any question. Right now, as we speak, if there any, by the way, the press note that we've handed over carries most of the information that I've given. A copy of the presentation is there, all the letters is there. If there are any questions that anyone has, I'm very happy to answer. Yes, sir. Could you? <laughs> okay, uh, in this present scenario, what is your feeling uh, as far as this COVID situation is concerned? Uh, this is a trillion dollar question, okay. Mr. Fossey, the WHO head, ICMR head. I don't think anyone in the world has got a handle on it. Okay. Europe opened and then locked down again. Okay. Right. In Bombay, in Maharashtra, we were facing the worst situation. Right now, it's under control. Tomorrow, it may get better, it may get worse. Nobody knows. I don't know. And I don't know. Nobody knows. So we have no way to predict what it is going to be in December. All we wanted to do was to be ready. Because if, if 20th December, suddenly, let's say the tourism department calls me and says, oh, let us do sunburn. Can't do. If you're not planned and prepared, cannot do. So we are keeping our plans and preparation ready. If things are okay, I just met... Uh, Mr. Rane, uh, the, the, the health minister outside, I've known him for a long time, so he looked at me and he laughed because I was wearing the sunburn mask, so he recognized this. So, and, and I asked him, so he said, what are you doing? I said, sir, don't worry. <clears throat> Unless you and everyone in Goa believes it's okay, we're not going to do it. Matter ends. No, my question is because you and Mr. Rane, the health minister, was in the same order, but yeah. 
one side he may give a press conference to us as far as covid issues are concerned yes no, so i have i have the same issues i have look i i today uh, i what we're going to give you i'm going to give each one of you a mask because i am as sunburn i'm also telling you please wear a mask so even if you come to the festival even if covid is gone i'm going to make sure that you wear a mask so listen i am as concerned more concerned about covid if not as much than anyone else i have children i have grandchildren i have a old mother i don't want covid i don't want you to have covid so please don't worry and anyone who who is worried that we want to be stupid and we want to make money at the cost of your health no 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 we don't want to the only the only sad part is nobody in the world knows when this menace will end we don't know should we wait till it ends to plan our life or should we get ready and execute when the things are better so we chose the option of getting ready and waiting so if we can't do december maybe we'll do january if we can't do january maybe we'll do february but we will do it when everybody is comfortable so, so there is no worry why does the government also doesn't come clear on this government is clear please open the folder see the letter the government gave us it's very clear it's very sad honestly that people started asking questions so in the media asking the minister and our concern no no he said the same thing even mr michael lobo has been saying no no i i spoke uh, uh, mr lobo i read his statement he said uh, my objection is sunburn should not happen in the current situation if the situation improves okay if the situation deteriorates no way in the current situation no way so i'm also saying the same thing i'm also saying no but if it gets better should we do it yeah we should do it how long will people sit at home so people also need to get out so slowly as slowly the goa is opening in maharashtra restaurants and bars have opened not everybody is open everybody is still not going out cinema theater they've opened but nobody is going slowly slowly they will come so this is how we have to uh, take life so the same covid tickets are already one more people will come for you uh, you said people are not going for films so what response are you expecting for your festival no film films they got permission to only open this week yeah. so by they have not even started yet so when they start i think people will start slowly maybe not house full but they will start slowly see what happened when they started flights i was scared i didn't want to fly okay i waited for a few months and then i re read a very interesting statistic 1.27 billion people have flown this year after covid 1.27 billion people do you know how many got covid in the air 27 people more people got it sitting at home do you understand so what i'm saying is hey, look there is a fear we don't know so look I don't want to talk about anything else it's not my job it's not my business but all I can tell you is outdoor 50 acres 100 acres of land few thousand people spread out in front of a stage is not a problem but are we going to do it when the covid threat is here no if the covid threat is minimized everybody feels comfortable they tell us the protocols we follow we do it we are not going to do it we have never done anything wrong we will not do it again simple very simple but when are you going to finalize see look ma'am uh, between us and the government in our conversation we look we it's a bit of a chicken and egg we we need to make a decision by a particular date because otherwise things can't happen right now that day according to us is towards the end of this month we will need at least one month of physical work all our artists that we've spoken to we've told them guys this is the situation if you want to come keep the date vacant but we'll confirm closer to the date when we confirm then you come so our our planning is end end of this month early december i think the government will review the situation and give us the final yes or no and that's when we will decide and when do you expect sales to go live so i know sales are live sales are live but it's with this clarity so look we have sold tickets historically if we don't sell tickets say for example i start selling tickets in december nobody can come this is the destination event ma'am people need to plan travel they need to plan stay but all our whatever is happening online right now it will if people if we can't do the event people get their money back it's no problem so how many tickets are sold as of right now i don't have the exact number i think a few hundred it's not it's not a huge number look the whole target itself is very small It's very small compared to whatever you've seen in Goa. This will probably be one of the smallest event, maybe as small as 2007 or 2008. Boss, you mentioned that this boss is not good this time because of COVID. Sorry? 
Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's because people are unsure. It's not, it's not COVID. See, please understand that people, people have, people are going to work. People are traveling. This morning I flew to Goa. The flight was packed. The, the flight, there was not a single seat vacant. What did you say about, uh, because there have been a number of opposition groups of uh, people opposing, especially even Goans. Then what is that? Because they are saying at this time... Well, listen, my only, this time I'm not doing it. I've already answered. So if you can tell them, then they'll stop opposing. So my only request is, they're opposing because they think we want to do it in the middle of COVID. No, we don't want to do it. So if you can carry the message to them, then they will be comfortable. So my whole idea of coming here and talking to you was to reassure you and through you, everyone else, that we are not opportunists. We have a long relationship with Goa. We're not going to mess it up for one event. We will only do something if it is okay and safe and everybody is comfortable, government is comfortable. We don't want to put anybody to any risk. Is this clear? Is there a number you have decided on what is safe and what is comfortable? Well, yeah, like uh, well listen, zero would, have, would be perfect. You know, at one time, I think, yeah, but I, but my assessment is that currently, I'm not sure about the number, I think it's about 150, 200, am I right? Daily cases? Yeah, somewhere there. Look, it's not my call, quite honestly. I think it's more a call of the government, but I would say if it goes a double digit, you know, it may be, maybe they will consider favorably, but, but it still is their call. I, I, I don't think we're going to face a situation of zero. At the end of the day, Restaurants, bars, hotels, casinos, life, flights, buses, trains, everything is on. You know, so I think some, somebody needs to find a way. For sure, we don't want to be the one aggravating the COVID situation, for sure, 100%. But the final call will be made, taken by the government. When they take it, that's the time. Then we will decide. Supposing they decide... They not told you a number. They no, they, they haven't put... The case is so well, quite, quite, quite honestly, that, that benchmark technically is not defined anywhere. There is no technical definition. I don't think the world has enough knowledge and history and experience on COVID to say below 50 it is safe or above 100 is unsafe. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's all about figuring out. So I think they will figure out. But the government of India, central government, decided in 5.0 on lockdown that you can do large-scale outdoor events provided you follow certain norms. That was decided in October. So what I'm saying is the government, your central government made a decision. State government made a decision to say, okay, plan. We will tell you finally whether you can do it or not. Okay, so we accept that situation. I think, I think we need to understand that and share it with everybody so people don't lose sleep over it and they can be comfortable and they can wait. What happens, say today you try and then suddenly the government says no. And what happens to the loss that you go through? It's my problem. It's my choice whether I want to work hard in anticipation, I want to work hard in anticipation. I want to take care of my fans. I want to try and give them a good time. But if the government says no, I'm not going to do it. So you're taking 50 I haven't said anything. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, given the, given the trends nationally, given what we're seeing in Maharashtra, given what we are seeing. Uh, hey, Odette, guys, don't leave, please. Are there something that I want to give you guys? Please hold on for two minutes. We're just winding up. Odette, can you please ask them to wait? Yeah. So if we're done with this, any more questions? Any artists? Uh, we are still figuring. Look, it's really difficult with, uh, with this uncertainty. So we've got to try to block three. Depend. We don't know which one will finally, you know, come in. I don't think we're going to have too many foreign artists. Because there is still a regulation that if you bring in a foreign artist, you'll have to isolate for 14 days and stuff. And even these artists are a bit, a bit nervous about traveling long distance, right? We don't have flights. We've only got bilateral air bubble flights right now. So we, we, we are still figuring some artists we might be able to bring, but it, it's all subjective. We are still planning. Okay. In terms of fees, how much money will pay to government? I don't know. It depends on the government how much they ask. It's not my choice. If you ask me, I want to pay nothing. But it's not my choice. But government is saying that you need to pay some dues to the That's all zero zero. Don't worry about that. I promise you, you will never ask me this question again. I don't want to go into too much detail. Because what happens when there's a dispute, both sides are responsible. The good news is disputes are settled. 
the other good news is whatever was the government demand more money than that demand is already sitting with the government so don't worry your government's money is absolutely safe and in their treasury okay done and what about the sanman classic amount that is gone now abhi kya classic abhi sanman goa karne do na baba okay thank you guys thank